Thank you, Mark and Alan, for the invitation to give this talk. Some of these slides are adapted from uh, Dr. Ashburn. I have nothing to disclose. So we've talked about issues um, for creating a great anastomosis, and my talk will focus on the type of anastomosis that's created in the pelvis. We strive to reconstruct our patients after a radical resection. However, our patients run into a great deal of trouble. With anterior resection syndrome, patients have incontinence, they have urgency with bowel movements, and then they have many bowel movements. So the goals to restoration of continuity include minimizing complications, preserving function, decreasing the amount of bowel movements, preserving continence, having an adequate reservoir um, at that effectively evacuates, and improving the patient's quality of life. These are potential options for re reconstruction after a resection, an end-to-end -end straight coloanal anastomosis, a side-to-end colonic J-pouch, an end-to-end -end coloplasty, and a side-to-end coloanal anastomosis. These are the different options uh, depicted that I just described. Looking at a straight end-to-end -end anastomosis versus a J-pouch. So the J-pouch was actually introduced in 1986 by Dr. Lazorth when he folded a piece of colon on itself and created a stapled side-to-side -side, um, reservoir in hopes that um, this would imitate the reservoir of a rectum. Since that time, there's been multiple trials looking at end-to-end -end versus J-pouch colonic anastomoses. If you look at these studies, there's actually a range of the length of the J-pouch ranging from five centimeters to 10 centimeters in size, and they were followed from six months to 24 months. Looking at the Hall book study, uh, there's actually an increased risk of the colonal anastomotic leak rate when you look at a straight end-to-end -end anastomosis versus the J-pouch. In all of these studies, you can see that there's a decreased frequency in bowel movements, um, going from six bowel movements with an end-to-end -end anastomosis versus two bowel movements with a colonic J-pouch. And you see that there's decreased frequency and also decreased constipation. Looking at quality of life, even though the J-pouch is superior with a reduction in bowel movements, urgency, and incontinence uh, followed for a year, um, they have found, and this was a study that had the, the J-pouch length at 68 centimeters, there's an um, incomplete evacuation and difficulty with differentiating between gas and stool. Um, they did find that they had comparable quality of life scores. This is another study by FIRST looking at quality of life with end-to-end -end anastomoses versus J-pouch, and they also found comparable quality of life scores. This is a study by Seiler looking at end-to-end -end versus J-pouch, and the quality of life scores were actually better with the J-pouch. So how long do we make the J-pouch? There's small J-pouches and there's large colonic J-pouches. Looking at the studies, sorry, I can't advance the slide, okay. For the small J pouches, uh, the size was five centimeters uh, versus 10 centimeters for a large J pouch. The morbidity, anastomotic leak, and mortality rates were comparable. Uh, with a small J pouch, they had an adequate reserve reservoir function. With a large J pouch, they actually had difficulty with evacuating the stool. Um, sometimes you actually can't create the J pouch. So um, in 26% of the uh, cases, uh, the most common reason is you run into a narrow pelvis where it's just very difficult to shove that J pouch down into the pelvis. Sometimes the sphincters are bulky, or if you do a mucosectomy, then there can be issues with reach or tension and pulling that G-pouch down um, low in the pelvis. If you're using the sigmoid colon, then there can be issues with 
uh, vascular supply, uh, and also um, patients can have extensive uh, diverticulosis, and then length can be an issue when you're creating a J pouch. And then relative reasons are pregnancy and just having distance disease and um, whether the patient needs to go back on chemotherapy very quickly after surgery. Looking at J-Pouch versus coloplasty, with the coloplasty, uh, what happens is there is a length of colon and then uh, you make a longitudinal incision at the anti-mesenteric border about eight centimeters and then you close that transversely. Looking at studies, uh, the reservoir for the coloplasty is about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, the frequency of bowel movements with the J-pouch is superior, so less, um, but with the coloplasty, they have less issues with constipation. The biggest thing that I wanted to point out is that with the coloplasty, there's actually a very significant leak rate and postoperative morbidity compared to a J-pouch. Looking at the quality of life, there's uh, no significant difference in scores. Looking at straight versus coloplasty, and this also looked at the other two anastomoses, straight versus coloplasty had the same quality of life, but J-pouch was superior out of all of four of them. The last anastomosis that I'd like to talk about is the side-to-end anastomosis compared to the J-pouch. There's two prospective randomized trials. Um, when you create the um, end to side anastomosis, then the reservoir is about four centimeters in size, so a little bit smaller. The morbidity, anastomotic leak rates, and mortality rates are comparable. The frequency of bowel movements is just a little bit less. So with a colonic J pouch, you have about two bowel movements per day versus three bowel movements per day for side to end anastomosis. So in conclusion, it's optimal to um, do a J pouch. That's the preferred option. An end to end anastomosis comes with many issues that we've talked about uh, with anterior resection syndrome. The coloplasty has fallen out of flavor because uh, they have higher leak rates. And then finally, the side-to-end colloidal anastomosis is an acceptable alternative to the colonic J-pouch. Thank you very much. Thank you.